Jesus. 
Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our gathering hymn this morning is in the hymnal, ELW 697, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. And we'll be singing all three stanzas, although the last refrain will be for our musicians.
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God bless you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put the veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out, and when he came out, and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 99 responsibly. I will begin with the odd verses, and you may follow with the even verses. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord, great in Zion, is above our all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the goodness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests and Samuel among those who you call upon your name, O Lord. They called upon you and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud that kept your testimonies of the decree that you gave them. O Lord, Lord, Lord God, our God, you, you answered them, them indeed. You, you were a God who forgave them, yes. yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill. For the Lord is God, the Lord our God is the Holy One. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Since, then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, see the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, as being transformed into the same image.
from one decree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to three of his disciples 
in a mountaintop experience. Our gospel text for this morning, however, seems to begin in a rather odd place. About eight days after these sayings, what sayings? We're left to perhaps wonder what's been going on. Well, by going back about 10 verses, we find that Jesus was praying all alone with just his disciples nearby when he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? And after receiving all sorts of answers, Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? And Peter quickly responded, the Messiah of God. Jesus instructed them not to tell anyone, and then he taught them that following him would mean taking up their own cross. So now, it is eight days later, and Jesus takes Peter, James, and John with him to climb up the mountain where again he wishes to pray. The scene is now set, and they have reached the mountain top, and Jesus is praying. And suddenly, change begins to happen. Suddenly, Jesus face and his clothing become dazzlingly bright. And two men appear at his side, Moses and Elijah. At this point, perhaps, we'd rather stay amid the glory and fanfare of the moment. Let's make a camp, have something to eat, and celebrate. This seems to be what's on Peter's mind, after all even though he really doesn't understand what's happening. It's good for us to be here, Peter exclaims. And perhaps like him, we'd prefer to stay in this high place. To simply jump from one amazing story to another, going from transfiguration right into Easter Sunday and the glory of Jesus' resurrection with maybe a few miracles and healings in between. Perhaps we'd rather stay on this liturgical high with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, camping out with Peter, James, and John. It would make perfect sense to want to forego the trials of Lent and Good Friday, to pass right by the pain and suffering to gloss over the burial and mourning. Who wouldn't rather just jump from this glorious mountaintop experience to the next big party on the schedule? Yet, we really don't live our lives solely in the glory of transfiguration <coughs> and Easter. Instead, our lives are filled with ups and downs, joys and sorrows, highs and lows, all put together. In fact, the arrival of Easter really wouldn't make much sense without the season of Lent, including Good Friday and the cross. Maggie Fallenschreck of St. Peter, Minnesota, is a faith lens blogger for the ELCA, and she writes, the power of resurrection is made even more amazing because of Jesus' death. Jesus without the cross is nothing new. Consequently, if we only see him in high places of our lives and the times when everything is going good, then we are only getting half of the story. In every situation, the highs and especially the lows, Jesus promises to accompany us, gently reassuring us, do not be afraid, I am with you. Jesus isn't confined to the mountaintops, to the good times in our lives when we feel like we have it all figured out. No. Jesus descends the mountain with us, following us into places where real life comes to fruition. 
today. Jesus is revealed on a mountaintop as someone who was chosen, set aside, holy, special, the Messiah, just as Peter proclaimed only eight days before. Jesus' presence and identity are confirmed, not by Moses or Elijah, but by God's own voice. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Naturally, Peter and the others are terrified. Who wouldn't be with God's voice booming from the clouds that are surrounding them? Yet, just as suddenly as it all began, the clouds quickly clear away and the brightness dims to normal. And Jesus is once more the person they know and follow. We're told they kept silent after that and came down from the mountain with Jesus the next morning. <clears throat> after all that glitz and glory among the clouds, Jesus comes back down to be with us, to be one with us, to heal, to teach, and to save each of us. He comes down from that brightly shining glory to the dirty pothole paths that we walk every single day. Jesus has been affirmed as God's own son. And yet, he comes down. He comes back down that mountain, back into that valley. Why? Because this is where the real work and real life happens. Because this is where his ministry of love and grace take place among us all. We too have experienced his glory. Maybe it was when we were young at confirmation camp, or it could have been on a Sunday when we attended church. Perhaps it was during a difficult time when we were comforted by others. Or it might have been among loved ones, or even strangers, or a beloved pet. Then again, perhaps it actually was a mountaintop experience, out overlooking a vista, an amazing sight to be sure. God's glorious presence comes to us in many extraordinary and quite ordinary places, surprising and unexpected people and times throughout our lives. And the season of Lent gives us the perfect opportunity to notice our Jesus moments or mountaintop experiences. Even as we follow Jesus and his disciples down that mountain, venturing with him deep into the valley of his ministry, including his final weeks on earth. Lent is a season that invites us to be still, if only for a few moments, to be attentive to God's presence all around us, to be prepared to listen, to move, to consider, perhaps to even try something new that encourages and feeds our faith as well as our relationship with God and with others. Perhaps there will be new Jesus moments as we make efforts to reach out to those in our community and those around us to make new friends, to get to know those around us, to listen to their perspectives and their issues, even if they're different from our own, to stand up for those who sorely need justice and freedom, to truly love not just our neighbors, but also those who've gone far too long as the other, or the enemy. 
This final Sunday of Epiphany is also the final Sunday of Black History Month, and it seems fitting to remember some of the words from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s mountaintop speech, given on April 3rd, 1968, the day before he was assassinated. The nation is sick. Trouble is in the land. Confusion all around. I know somehow that only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. And I see God working in this period of time in a way that people in some strange way are responding. Something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up. And wherever they are assembled today, whether they are in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, Accra, Ghana, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Jacksonville, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee, the cry is always the same. We want to be free. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me. Not now. Because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. <clears throat> Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he has allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And I am happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. End quote. As we all know, Dr. King didn't live to see Barack Obama elected president. He didn't witness the fruits of his own labors, nor the troubled times that continue from the 21st, from the 20th century to the present. Yet I have a feeling that his dream lives on in all the people and the lives that he touched. In fact, Dr. King's dream of justice and freedom for us all sounds a whole lot like Jesus' own description of God's kingdom and his command to love one another just as he loved and continues to love us all. Like Dr. King, our eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord in every Jesus moment or mountaintop experience of our lives. And no matter our longevity, we take comfort in Jesus' promise to accompany us. Even now, as we begin our Lenten journey through all of our joys and our fears, we take comfort in Jesus' words not to be afraid, because we do know the end of the story, and it is far from over. We take comfort in God's never-ending presence in Jesus. Because through his resurrection, we know that death does not have the final word. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 866. We are marching in the light of God. Thank you.
this. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. After the words, God of grace, you may respond, hear our prayer. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. Do love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear those who are in distress, especially those living in the Ukraine. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and those we offer now, out loud, or in our hearts. Join my sheep. The children, the grandchildren. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of seasons. Pastors, deacons, assisting ministers, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promise, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We continue in this time of pandemic, still not safe shaking hands or hugging, but we can and we should offer a sign of God's peace to those who are here in person, as well as those who are unable to be here for whatever reason. Let us reach out however we're able with a wave, a smile, a text, an email, a card, or even a letter. Let us reach out to each other with God's own love and peace. God works in us and through us and through our giving uh, to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little bit more, we are deeply appreciative of your generosity. Let us be a blessing for others, just as Christ has been a blessing for us all. Thank you.
Help us to prevent the spread of any illness. If you or someone you know might benefit from pastoral care or contact, please let me know. I will reach out however I'm able. Call the office, leave a message, send me an email or a text. If it's an emergency, please call my cell phone or send me a text message and we'll get in touch and I will, as I said, reach out however I am able. Um, probably, if you haven't already, you will have received an envelope from the church with a purple handout and a little black packet. Now, um, I got mine in the mail yesterday. Um, of course, I live two streets away, but I think, have most of you received yours already? Okay, so I think most of us have received them. In the little black packet is ashes. <coughs> and on the purple paper are directions for what to do for Ash Wednesday. So if you are unable to come into the church for Ash Wednesday, at 10.30 in the morning, uh, my Wednesday morning prayers, I will be using this document and ashes to uh, commemorate Ash Wednesday. Um, so you can tune in there. You can do this by yourself, or you can attend worship. Um, worship will be at 5.30 at St. Stephen or 7.30 at St. Paul's, and the thing is, if you come to church in person, you'll get one of those little black packets with ashes, and you will be putting the ashes on yourself. So um, it'll be a little bit different, that way I'm not coming in contact quickly with a whole bunch of different people. So just be advised of that, and uh, there will be directions um, that Ed's going to put together on the slides. He doesn't know it yet. Um, and uh, and we'll, we will have a very blessed Ash Wednesday and beginning of our Lent. And speaking of Lent, um, we will be beginning a joint Lenten study um, Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. at St. Paul's. Uh, we're going to be going over the book uh, Together by Grace, Introducing the Lutherans. I have two books and two study guides in my office. Uh, they're $10. Um, if you have a problem with that, just let me know. Um, but I do have them, and uh, you can pick them up. In the front, I have a couple of... Uh, Oh, I take it back. They're not in my office. They're right here. Carl, you want to help me out here? Video guy? Thank you. Got the screen. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're right here, uh, together by Grace, introducing the Lutherans. Um, also in the front, I have a couple of uh, Advent calendars. And these are a little different than the past. You get this little scratch-off thing, and I think I did one of them. Let's see, maybe not. Okay, so you scratch off each day, and it gives you an activity for the day. So uh, mostly this is for kids, but it could be fun for older, so maybe the Winans can pick this up, or if you have a grandchild, you can pick it up and do something with them. I just have a couple here. Um, if we run out, just let me know. And I also have a children's message uh, for today. So uh, if you're interested in joining, it seems like we're going to have a pretty good group um, for this uh, Lenten study. Um, as I said, it's, it's six weeks. And we're going to find out about who we are as Lutherans, our history, why we do what we do, and, and more. So I know a lot of people are very excited about it and planning to join. 
If you missed this class, I probably will do another one maybe in person later, in the, like in the evenings at a later time. Um, I'd also like to announce that Zachary Winans has completed his study uh, for confirmation, and we will be having his confirmation, what date did I say, Zach? I thought I did. No, um, I think it was around Pentecost. So I think it's like, uh, when's Pentecost? Uh, 50 days after Easter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zach, it's 50 days after Easter. So start, start counting. But it'll be soon, but congratulations to Zachary for finishing your confirmation uh, training and it's been a long time through COVID and everything else and we're very proud of you. Um, let's see, any other announcements? I know Steve is ready. Um, Steve, why don't you go ahead while you're... Oh, good morning. Um, on the calendar is Bleeds Mark, uh, April 24th. That's the uh, first event of the Art and Music Festival of St. Stephen. Uh, the Master Works Chorale will be with us in full strength. Uh, it'll be a wonderful concert, so we hope you all will be able to come. Um, just uh, another uh, thing that I wanted to mention that uh, I think involves us all that we've been, uh, who are aware of what's been going on in the world over the last uh, period of time. I happened to call my nephew yesterday, uh, who lives in Lithuania. I uh, recently moved from London uh, to Lithuania with his family uh, to run his companies and, and to uh, teach at the university. And I asked him how, uh, how things were going I wanted to uh, ask him how things were going, and I didn't uh, didn't get a, uh, through to him. All the lines were busy, and I, so I sent him an email, um, and it was a rather interesting email. Uh, he said that uh, he's recently moved out of his house and uh, turned it over to uh, uh, some of the displaced people. Refugees. Uh, to the refugees. Refugees. Okay, refugees. From Thank Ukraine. You. Okay. So anyway, uh, I uh, 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 called Pastor and I, I said, you know, I remember a time probably 70 years ago where our church, St. John's and St. Peter's, uh, welcomed a displaced family. I think that's what we called it then, uh, from Estonia. Uh, Stalin was doing his thing, and uh, we found they lived with us for a while, and, and we finally found a home for them. And they've now been assimilated into society. Uh, and I called Pastor and I said, "What? Well, what are we doing? Uh, this horrible thing that has happened in, in the world has, has affected all of us, and I think will continue to affect us. What? What can we do? Uh, can we raise some money?" And her suggestion was to call Lutheran World Federation. Uh, I did thank you very much for sending me that information. So I, I have the information uh, from them. And I thought uh, maybe we could raise some money uh, and maybe all three <coughs> Lutheran churches or uh, all both Lutheran churches in the city and maybe St. Paul's and send it over uh, to a Lutheran church in uh, Lithuania where my uh, nephew is uh, to, to help out. And I, I happened to notice a, a news flash uh, and, and I sent another email to my uh, nephew asking him how many uh, people in Lithuania needed housing that were moving out of uh, Ukraine. And, uh, that he, he didn't know. But a newsflash came through that there were 100,000 people that had uh, had moved uh, even farther west 
So the, the world, um, world something federation. World Lutheran, Lutheran World Federation. Lutheran World Federation, thank you. The Lutheran World Federation um, is uh, an organization of Lutherans from around the world. And if you go to their website, if you just Google Lutheran World Federation, their website will pop up very easily. And there is a place to donate uh, for something immediately to do. And in the meantime, I asked Steve to ask his cousin, you know, do they need money or do they need supplies? So, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out and make a collection uh, of whatever is needed to help those poor folks. So in the meantime, we keep them, of course, in our prayers. Fred. I, I hesitate to even say, say anything, but uh, once again, we want to uh, uh, say welcome to my, my dear friend, Frank Grosso, uh, for helping us uh, celebrate this last epiphany uh, today. So Frank and I, we did the math, and we figured we've been playing together for almost 25 years. And when there was a New Orleans uh, theme of the service, there was no one that I would have rather had than, than Frank. Um, in the day, Frank was the saxophone player for the Syracuse-based uh, group Lil Georgie and the Shuffle Hungarians, which toured the world and made how many CDs? A few. Well, it, made, it made CDs, and, but it was a Syracuse-based New Orleans. Is George yeah. still alive in New Orleans? No, he actually moved back here. He's doing a lot with YouTube, starting uh, a channel. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, All right, but, uh, but uh, uh, you know, Katrina cut him off. Katrina cut, cut him as, off. But, as uh, those things cut us off. I just wanted to say, as you were playing uh, during the anthem, and I know it wasn't a strictly uh, religious <laughs> uh, song, but I have to say, I, and, and this is not sacrilegious. I want you to know that. I could just imagine Jesus at least tapping his toes, if not dancing, and certainly uh, putting us in a mood that is a little more peaceful and a little more restful, which is something that we are all in desperate need of, especially during this time of uh, pandemic. So um, I thank you for your efforts today. And uh, I was, it, it was all I could do. I could not keep my feet steady. And I'm sure Jesus was right there with me. So um, I would uh, invite everyone to stand as you're able for the blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forevermore. Amen. 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 Our sending hymn this morning is hymn number 841, Lift Every Voice and Sing. We will be singing stanzas one and three. This is the African American National Anthem, and it concludes our celebration of Black History Month, which is to stay with us all year as we seek social justice and equity through our community and our world. Thank you.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 